morning. So we're uh, moving combines this morning. First, right off the rip. That's the that's the festivities right now. miles down the road do some fields that are going to wheat originally I was going to start messing with the drill today and try to get it up and going we we're just going to use one combine but there's a 95% chance of rain at 5:30. so instead of working on that drill today when we have a good running day we're gonna work on that drill tomorrow because we got to do a little bit of work to it got to make a couple of adjustments so we want to do that on a day we can't harvest see if we can get some more harvesting done before this rain sets in Hopefully we get some rain. Normally I wouldn't want that, but we haven't had any rain for, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks, and it's a little dry. Give the cutter bar a walk by. I don't see any busted sections. That's good. So I'm just happy the combine's still here after the thermal event yesterday. Didn't see anything smolder and last night when we got out. Walked around it pretty good and didn't smell anything anymore. But... Definitely got a little toasty for a minute yesterday. All right, now we take the heads over. Have Caleb bring us back over here, me and dad to get the combines. BJ, I think's taking the tractor over now. Then he's gonna go take a semi in. Yeah, uh, that'll be pretty well moved. All right, much better, much better. We can actually see the the metal on the feeder house. That camera angle is great. Game changer. We're gonna park these here. I guess we're gonna go get the combines and bring them here to fuel up and blow them off and everything. But we're not combining here. We got a little bit of a move after this. But this is on the way. So, we just had a massive change of plans. We did? <laughs> so we're gonna run over here now by the bins because there's a chance of high wind and storms today. Take this thing over to the hoop barn and spray off these windshields. Hit them with a full blast of water. It can't make it any worse. Double crops are dropping leaves pretty quick. Now I can see the holes in the stand. <laughs> Look pretty good when all the leaves are on. So we will keep on rolling in the first crop. We usually save the double crops for pretty late. Like usually that's after the corn's done. That said, if we get done with first crops before we really get started in corn, we, we might just keep rolling. I don't know. But it looks like there is a pretty good chance of rain here. So it's kind of unusual for us. Usually we don't get this much dry weather. Um, so we're 60% probably on beans. Uh, we run today. I mean, we'll be 70%. I mean, we got about 150 acres right here. Um, well, we got a pretty decent chance to finish those if it doesn't rain. I think it is going to rain us out, but make a pretty big dent in them. Power ladder. I forgot all about it when we came over here. All right, we're gonna hit this thing with some water on that faucet. See if we can't clean these windows up some. I'm gonna do that, dad's gonna fuel up. I'm thinking if I do that now, maybe my windows will be dry in about an hour or so when we go down to the field. Wasn't a whole lot to do and there's a lot of wind, so we should be able to start somewhat early. That should help. It's cleaning dad's windshield and I noticed a wood smell that was really familiar to yesterday. And then I started looking around for the smoke and, well, we've got another thermal event. Oh, it's smoking. There's two right there. There's another one right behind it and then there's one in the middle of the combine. 
middle of it where? Towards the center. See that black spot up there? So we got a couple guys from Underforth down here right now. Sean over here from Underforth. He's a John Deere enthusiast, especially the old 4000 series tractors. It's only about 15 miles from me where it was at. And I can never find it. So Sean, would you repaint it or leave it? I definitely would leave it. Uh, okay. I definitely would leave it, I like the hood. So in the antique tractor market, original paint is worth something then? Oh, a little bit, absolutely. The okay. wheels are awful bad. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks. The, the wheels tarnish and then the, the old year-round cab, it definitely didn't have the same quality of paint. Man, I got used to this. Sean hooked up the head, unwrapped the reel. That's, uh, that's pretty handy. So this field here is 17 acres and we have 116. A little wet, but not too wet. It's like our lunch wagons here. Can you get anything to drink? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, Sean, you remember. It was like 1971. Oh, yeah, I had a gleaner. In 1971? Nope. Got a different riding partner now. I think I'm a lot better looking than Sean. So we are getting some sprinkles already. That's not going to go well for us finishing up down here. We have 116 acres across this ditch. We have 17 right here. In order to finish that today, we're going to have to be able to run pretty late and not get rained out. Can you believe it? First one of the day down. This is where I like to run mine. That reel up just to tick the top of that. Yeah. This first year I ran a McDon this year. Thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. But this is different. Not having that center. Yeah, I do like not having like that linkage over. I mean you got a good view, but like I said, the reel is real slow to go up and down because you only got two lift cylinders for a 40-foot clear span. So Sean, when was the last time you drove a gleaner? <laughs> last time I drove a gleaner would be probably 2003 and then I switched to the green side and then recently so yeah I've on John Deere number one two three four so this year luckily was able to find me a Draper and a really really nice 9770 thanks to Ken Feld and uh, so far, so good. My my 13 year old's trying to kick me out of the cab, though. Jake, <laughs> he uh, hopped in last night, and put the hopper topper down by himself, and, <clears throat> and uh, pulled her right in the shed. So Jake, I had to buy a combine. Dad wouldn't get out. I had to. I had to buy a combine. A lot dustier out here than I thought. Kind of regret this decision. So Sean, this time of year, what uh, what pieces of equipment uh, are you guys going out seeing the most? I'm guessing grain carts. Yeah, grain carts. Um, right now we're in the midst of our Raptor strip till. Uh, this is our uh, second year, so Raptors are, are of the essence and following up with customers, making sure they're we're meeting their needs. Um, Fertility placement's a big deal, so a lot of interest in that. So the, the, uh, the Raptor's been a, a uh, hot topic at Umberforth. But overall, um, you know, grain carts, tracks. Um, hopefully I don't run into your dad there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, grain carts are, are very near and dear to us. And we build our own tracks, very, uh, very good track system. The equalizer track you know has the ability to to camber on the road and in the field and we've seen huge benefits to uh, uh, you know component life you hear a lot of customers that run the competition and, and they go through bearings and seals and you just don't hear that on the equalizer track that uh, you watch that thing go through, through the field and it's constantly cambering equalizing that load so we don't have pinch points and uh, a lot of a lot of good customer comments and 
and rave reviews on that equalizer track so yep. that's been been awesome but yeah i think i'm gonna wrap it up brian and man i was just getting ready to go home and take a dump <laughs> man my buddy seat's been getting a lot of use it's my coffee table come on bj i see him coming through the dust he's in there So the rain is rolling in. I am deadheading out of here and it's raining behind me. It's weird looking out my windshield. Right now, you can't, I can't even tell it's raining. The only way I can tell it's raining is by looking out that windshield. Because the rain's coming from behind us. But it is raining. And looking at the radar, we're probably, I would imagine we're on hook heads. It doesn't look good. Like as far as us being able to come back in like an hour. Uh, we got probably... We're over half done in this field. We probably have like 50 acres left, I would imagine. 120 acres, I think, is in this field. 124. I can't remember. We call it we call it a 77 acre field in our monitor, but I know it's at least 117 acres. I'm pretty sure it's 124. Makes a lot of sense. I know. Yep. There comes the rain. It's like I've stated before. It is plenty dry. I mean, it's really dry. Half inch rain would be great. That would help the wheat go in the ground. I mean, this ground's hard right now, like not the greatest for planting. A little bit of moisture in there would also help that wheat sprout right up once we get it planted, so this will be good. Hopefully we get a half inch of rain, no high winds. They're calling for high winds, I don't like that. High winds on uh, on mature corn make me nervous. They're even calling for a chance of hail, which is terrible. That would be, that would be worst case scenario. Hopefully we miss that, we just get a little bit of rain. Oh yeah, it's coming. Oh, I see the rain right over that hill. The big, the big rain. The sprinkle we were getting quit, but oh, there's some more. Time to get out of here. Cause combines don't 100% melt. So we gotta get back to the shed. All right, guys, that is it for this video. We are going to head to a Pee Wee football game. It's not canceled for some reason. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor and thumbs up the video. Like the channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.